Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. If you're new, don't worry. You'll learn about all that stuff as you go along. Um, You know, I'm not a circuit speaker. You know, I'm not someone, I, I, I speak from the heart. You know, what comes out of my mouth is what comes out of my mouth, you know. But, um, you know, today uh, I'm 1,569 days clean and sober. Um, I don't say that because it impresses you, but I'm really proud of myself for that. Like, really proud because I could not get, you know, for, for, I'll be 50 this year and, and, and I came in the rooms, obviously, when I was about, what, so let's say, you know, I was about 45, 46. And, um, you know, up until that point, you know, I couldn't stop using for years and years and years. And, um, you know, so that number to me is very important. It's important to my family as well. You know, it's important to my friends and the people around me that, um, you know, that this illness affected. You know, um, so, but yeah, look, I mean, it, it, if you're new, welcome. Well, if this is your first meeting and you don't get nothing out of my chair, please go to another meeting, you know, because you will hear your story. You know, you'll identify with someone at some point in these rooms, you know. Over the years, I've, I've identified it with hundreds of chairs. But there's been other chairs where, you know, it's not been my story. But I was always told to look for the similarities and not the differences, you know what I mean? And... And the one similarity that we all have is the inability to stay stopped. You know, and I say that because, you know, I stopped every day for years and years and years. Every day I stopped, but I couldn't stay stopped. You know, and, um, you know, that's my problem. Um, the, The book says that we should disclose in a general way, you know, what it was like, what I did and what it's like now. Um, You know, what it was like. You know, my using was shit for a very, very long time. You know, incomprehensible demoralization, as it says in the book. You know, waking up with uh, guilt, shame and remorse on a, on a daily basis, you know, and um, and really wanting to stop. Like, you know, having my wife say to me, you know, like, as it says in the book, you know, if, oh, yeah, by the way, if you are, I'll say this at the beginning, you know, if you haven't got one and you're new on this meeting, don't leave it to the end of the chair at the beginning get a blue book it will save your life you know i promise you that you know um and get a sponsor and go through the 12 steps you know because that's that's how we recover um you know i i used to my, my wife used to ask me the question you know why can't you stop surely you should be out of stop for me and our daughter and my other kids my stepkids and all that but you know i was i was powerless you know you know, a fine example is this, you know, uh, uh, you know, we all suffer with a lie, right? And the lie tells us it's going to be different. The lie tells us it's going to be better. The lie tells us I'm going to enjoy it this time. The lie can tell us all sorts of things, you know, but, you know, this is an example for anyone new, you know. Um, you know, I'd be, I'd be stood in my downstairs toilet, I'd be looking in the mirror, right? And I'd be, I'd be, I'd be in pieces. I've done it again. I've done it again, you know, what have I done, you know? And I'm like, how am I going to face the day ahead? You know, it says quicksand stretched out all around us, you know, like my life and everything was just sinking, do you know what I mean? And to go into the day and face what was in front of me just felt like impossible, you know? But somehow I'd scrape up the energy or or or, or the, or the I'd, I'd just get out the front door, you know, and I'd be full of fear. You know, and I, I, I'd, I'd get through the day a little bit, you know, and, and I, I, I'd, I may feel a little bit better and out of nowhere, the thought would come into my head. I know what, I know what will make you feel better, Matt. Go and have a pint. Go and have a pint, Matt. That will make you feel better. You know, and, and I'd buy into that lie that that pint is going to make me feel better. You know? I go to the pub and I have the pint and there I am again the next morning saying exactly the same thing into the same mirror for the thousands, God knows how many time. You know what I mean? Um, 
He says, I can't bring into my sufficient memory that, that, that like, of even a, a week or a month ago. With me, it was hours. You know, so I'm dying I, of, of, like, you know, I've used all night. I'm, I'm in a place where, I, you know, I'm, I'm in tears. I don't want to do it. I really don't want to do it. And do you know what I mean? And then, sorry, it's just my boy coming in. Go and piss off, right? <laughs> See, that's recovered, you know what I mean? My stepson, love him to pieces, pain in the fucking ass, right? Um, but the thing is, is, you know, I, I, I'm in pieces, you know what I mean? And, and I, can't, I can't remember that pain. I can't remember that feeling that I had, do you know what I mean? All but a few hours ago. You know, and I put, as I say, once I put that first substance in me, that point, I'm off and running. Now, surely, right, if I was of sane thinking, if I was a normal person, like in the book it says, you know, there's three types of people, right, that use and drink, right, the moderate, the hard, and the real. Do you know what I mean? Now, if I'm a moderate drinker, I'm going to think to myself, oh, Christ almighty, that was, you know, like, you, you can't go for another drink, Matt. Look what happened yesterday. You know, or, or, or if I'm an ardent drinker, you know, I'm, I might have my missus shouting at me saying, you've done it again, you've done it again, and I can stop, you know. But, you know, how it describes the real alcoholic addict is, you know, it is staying stopped. I have no ability to stay stop. You know, it's as simple as that, you know. And, uh, you know, my using went on for years and years and years, you know. I'm going to, like, I hear horrific stories, horrific stories of people's up upbringings. I had terrible, like, you know, I, I feel for them. I look at them and my brain says, no wonder you fucking used. Do you know what I mean? But that weren't my story. You know what I mean? My story was, my story was, my parents are still together today. I had a fantastic upbringing. You know, they gave me everything. I wanted for nothing, you know? And, um, but that didn't matter. You know, when I was younger, yeah, there were signs. I was, you know, I wore that badge of honor with my pals that I'd do more and I'd go longer. You know, and I just thought I was greedy. You know, I had a higher resistance to drugs, you know, but but the reality is, is that, that I, I had this illness when I was very young, you know, and, um, you know, I had to go on for many, many years using against my will, you know, to get to that point of surrender. Um, you know, like the, the, the consequences that I had in my life through drinking and using were, were, were terrible, but they weren't enough. They weren't enough to stop me. You know, all the things that, that, that I did, I said, how I behaved, you know, the lies, the manipulation, all the stuff that I did, I just, I, I, I you know, I couldn't stop. I basically could not stop. Um, fast forward 30 years now, 30 years. So, you know, from when I first picked up mind altering substance from the age of about 14, 15, I'll give you a quick one, right? When I was younger, right? When I, when I started smoking puff, right, and it ain't like this skunk that they all fucking smoke now, excuse my French, but, you know, it's it was something you burnt into a joint, right, and you bought a lump of it, right, you bought a lump, and the thing is, is I can remember being like 15 years old, right, and buying that lump, that first lump, right, and burning it into a joint, and then burning, and then all of a sudden looking at it and starting to obsess over the size of it, it's getting smaller, I can't run out. Fuck me, I can't run out of that. I cannot run out of that, you know. And, um, you know, the, the years went on. The drug log, it's like, I've done everything, you know what I mean? The only thing I didn't do was stick syringes in me, you know. But, you know, I got to a point where, you know, I was, I was killing myself, you know. Like, sometimes death seemed an easier option. Do you know what I'm saying? You get to that point where, like, I, I just can't go on the way I am. I can't see a way out. You know, I had no idea about the rooms. Um, and about nine months, about nine months before I come into the rooms of Cocaine Anonymous, um, I got a phone call from a, from a fellow, right? Someone who was in the fellowship. Unfortunately, he's not in the fellowship anymore. I'm still in contact with him. He's a friend. He's managing his drinking, apparently. But we'll see. Do you know what I mean? He knows where we are. And... Um, you know, he rang me up, he cold called me and he, he introduced himself and uh, he said, you know, we've got a mutual friend that said you might need some help. And I went, I beg your pardon, what, what are you talking about, mate? And he said, um, you know, I, I go to these meetings and they've really helped me. I believe that they might be able to help you. And I said, I don't know what the 
what the fuck you're talking about, mate? I said, but um, he said, listen, look, you know, maybe you're doing a bit too much drinking and, and sniffing and, and other bits and bobs. And I went, whoa, 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 mate. Do you know what I mean? Thank you, but no thank you. I'm fucking fine. There's nothing wrong with me. Do you know what I mean? And um, at that point, I was dying. You know what I mean? But I still didn't want, I could right? It's, <laughs> Right, the, the first step of the first, the first step is not written in the steps, right? To concede your innermost self. It says it in the book. To admit to yourself that you can't go on, that you're fucked, that you need help. You know, that's the biggest, the biggest step in my life was admitting to myself that I was fucked. Do you know what I mean? And and there I was going, no, mate, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, thanks, but no thanks, but piss off. You know, um, fast forward that nine months and, um, you know, after another one of them sprees, I mean, after another one of them, you know, them prestigious benders that they talk about, that, that, you know, going out, disappearing, turning my phone off, you know, you know, my missus ringing hospitals and police stations, you know, not knowing whether I'm alive or I'm dead, you know, all these things. And, you know, I, I come home and, you know, I've been given so many warnings so many warnings in you know previously by my wife you know if you don't stop we're done and the arrogance of me you know i don't know if you if you're like me you got your your your, your areas of self and defects at the back of your book right and when i look at arrogancy what right, the great me the fucking great me i mean when i look back now the great me was a piece of shit that was worthless had no money was dishonest selfish you know didn't care about anyone or anything except myself and, and my using, you know, and, you know, I walked in the house after, I think, three days, something like that, three or four days, and I walked in and, and it was very eerily quiet and I walked in and I was waiting for the barrage. I was waiting for that moment of you, like, you know, and that had happened hundreds of times before and, um, and it was quiet and I walked in and I looked around and, and my wife was lying on the settee and um, this illness, like it fucking destroys other people, everyone around us. That's what this illness does. It destroys everything and everyone around us. And, um, you know, and I looked at her and something was different. Right. Well, something was really different. And I looked and, you know, I was waiting for her and she just casually looked up at me and didn't say a word. And I just thought, what's going on? Anyway, she stood up and walked over to me and, um, and she, she very calmly said, if you don't get help, we are done. Right. And, if there's anyone new on the meeting, you've got to come in for yourself. There's no point coming in because your missus has told you she's going to leave you or you've lost your custody of your kids or, you know, or you've lost your job or any of that stuff, right? You've got to come in for yourself. Right? But at this point in my life, right, I got honest. I got honest for the, like, you know, I actually got honest with her and I looked at her and I went, I'm fucked. I, I need help. Do you know I mean, I need help. I can't. I'm going to kill myself. I need help. And uh, and she said, I know you do. And uh, she said, you need to go to one of them meetings. And I went, I don't know, I don't know what to do. I'm petrified. I don't know what to do. And she said, listen, I've looked it up. She said, there's a meeting on tonight in Shepparton. And uh, Shepparton, from where I live, you probably know it from the Zoom meeting and all that. It's about a 15, 20 minute drive. Um, and I went, right, I'll go. And she said, I'll take you. And she took me to the meeting. Um, you know, and I, I turned up at that meeting and I was absolutely petrified, full of fear. I didn't know what to accept, expect, you know. Um, I, 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 you know, I was, I was a stranger. And, you know, my, my experience of turning up to my first meeting is, is, is what I try and do for the newcomer. You know what I mean? And when I'm at my home group or when I'm at a meeting, you know, I put my arms out and I welcome them and I look them in the eye and say, it's going to be all right. You know, and, um, and that's what happened. Someone greeted me. Someone said, welcome. You know, they said, you're new, aren't you? Well, I hadn't washed for four days. I hadn't changed clothes. I was smelling. I had a combination of blood and snot pouring out of my nose. And I went, no shit, Sherlock. You're not fucking joking, are you? And they went, no, we, we could, we could tell. And, uh, anyway, they, they welcomed me in. They, they showed me where the tea was and they said, look, if you sit down and listen, right. And, um, and I walked in and I, um, and I sat right at the back and that, you know, I always, like, I'll tell you one thing now very quickly, right. When I sit at a meeting, I always sit at the back 
Now, I've heard people say only the sick people sit at the back. I'll tell you why I sit at the back, because I watch people, I watch newcomers, I watch their fucking legs tapping, I watch them, they can't keep still and all that, and I think, I've got you, you're new. Do you know what I mean? If they've not introduced themselves, you're new, you're the man I need to speak to. Do you know what I mean? All the women. And um, I sat at the back of the meeting, and um, I didn't hear anything. I can't tell you what was said. I have no idea. I just sat there consumed with absolute fear and and not knowing what was what what was in front of me. How I was going to stop, you know, you know. They spoke about this book, and I'm thinking, like, how the f how is a book going to help me? Yeah, you know I mean, and they did say about a sponsor. Um, there's there's I've got close people in my like in the fellowship, you know, and Kev Fitzgerald was doing the chair. He's multiple years now. I think he must be coming up to about nine years, something like that. I don't know if he's 10 yet. You had um, you had Will Reese taking the meeting. He's nearly 14 years, right? And Charlie B, I sat next to him. And he's, um, I think he's seven or eight years now, you know? And um, and Charlie nudged me and he said, you need to go up and get his key ring. And I just went up and got, I didn't know what I was doing, right? You know, but my, the reality, right? My reality and the truth is I had not completely conceded. I'd not completely given in to the fact that I was an addict and I, you know, I was, I was holding on to something and, um, I had two grams in my Timberland boot. Why? Right, that was my truth. Why? Right, so I'm sitting in the meeting, I'm listening to this stuff. Why? Right, and as the meeting's finishing, right, that obsession, bang, it's on me. I'm walking out of the meeting and all I can think about is what is in my boot, you know? I, I, I sit next to my wife on the way home in the car. How did it go? Yeah, brilliant. Like, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, brilliant. You know, went home and used. Right, and I'm going to give, I'm going to say something now, right? And this ain't to be, you know, to impress anyone or to say that I'm bigger, better, or, you know, I, I, I had two grams, right? And and I took and, and I had to get them done very quickly. I sniffed a gram in one line and a gram in another. And I'm not saying that to be this is this is leading up to the story, right? My missus caught me, you know, because I lied in the bed and I thought my heart was gonna pump, it was gonna burst out of my chest, right? And you know, I lied there and she looked at me and she went, You fucking used, haven't you? And I went, No, I lied. Well, it was so obvious, she went, that's it. She said, I cannot believe it. After everything, you know, you've been to a meeting. You've, she said, you're done. You're gone. Right. And I lied in that bed. Right. And, and I, I, I she just, she just turned over and just like, you know, just, I think she might've gone downstairs or whatever, but I just lied there and something happened. Right. This is, this is why, you know, this is, this is where I believe, you know, that, that something was working in my life. Right. Because what happened is, is, is I shut my eyes. And the next thing I know, right, is I woke up in the morning, right? Now, after that amount of using, it's impossible. You know, I've never slept in my life on that stuff. You know, I've never, you know, and I woke up in the morning and I opened my eyes and the first thought was what the fuck's happened? And I looked at my wife and she looked at me and the first thing that come out of my mouth is I've got to go to another meeting. I fucked up, but I've got to go to another meeting. And, um, and that's my journey started. You know, I don't know whether, you know, we talk about, Deep down in every man, woman, and child is the fundamental idea of God, right? Now, I heard someone speaking before the meeting saying that God is everything in this program, right? Um, yes. But also, a lot of fucking action thrown in with it. Do you know what I mean? That is, that is my, my most, that's been revealed to me and shown to me. And um, I opened my eyes, and, and as I said, I said, I've got to go to another meeting, and I did. And... Um, you know, I, I went to another meeting and another meeting. On my third meeting, you know, I heard someone share back in about two rows in front of me, and I thought I recognised that voice. It was the guy that had cold called me nine months before. Well, I, I approached him after the meeting. I went, do you remember me? And he said, no, sorry, are you new? And I went, yeah. I went, you rung me up about nine months ago. I said, you, you, we've got a mutual friend. He told you to call. And he went, oh, my God, is that you? Straight away offered me sponsorship. You know, right there and then, and uh, our pie, our paths, they split after about five weeks, right? And he's still a friend today, and and my experience was, you know, I looked at him as a friend. You know, it wasn't a sponsor; he was a friend. And um, and then shortly after that, I got my now sponsor. Um, you know, 
we started going through the steps. You know what I mean? He gave me some direction straight away, straight away. You know what I mean? He said, this is what I want you to do on a daily basis, right? He said, you know, and you're all going to hear it, and you've all heard it a million times before, but it's a fact, and it's the truth, right? He said, I want you to wake up every morning and invite God into your life. He said, I want you to get your hands and knees, humble yourself and pray and ask God for a clean and sober day. And I remember saying, well, what's God? You know, he said, just choose something. He said, and mate, just, he said, for, for, for a start, just choose anything. And I, you know, and I, I, I chose something in the beginning. Um, you know, he said, I want you to write a gratitude list, 10 things you're grateful for, five things you're grateful for not. And, you know, up until that point, you know, I was looking at my life thinking I had nothing. Um, I soon learned that I had everything. Do you know what I mean? Um, he said, I want you to meditate in the morning. He said, I want you to shut your eyes and have some quiet time. He said, I want you calling newcomers every day, at least two. I called like five, six, seven, as many as I could get, you know, in my earlier days. And uh, he said, I want you going to a meeting every day. And, um, and I said, I can't do a meeting every day. I've got a family. He said, you know, you need to put this stuff first. You know, and in my early days, you know, I had a family. We've got eight kids between me and my wife. And, you know, I went to six meetings, physical meetings, every single, every, for six months, I was at six meetings a week for six months. I gave my family one day a week, you know, and, uh, you know, and I did everything, you know, and he said, at the end of the day, I want you to, I want you, uh, you know, invite God into your life and, 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 and thank him for a clean and sober day. And, you know, then we started going through the steps and, um, you know, everyone has their own experience with the steps, you know, it's a life saving process, you know, life saving and, you know, I, 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 it starts at one and begins at 12. You'll have your own experience. That's all I can say. You'll have your own experience. If you do them properly and thoroughly, you, you're guaranteed. It guarantees that you'll have a spiritual experience. It guarantees that you'll have a, a, a psychic change, which is a change in your thinking. I no longer think how I used to think. I'm a completely different person, you know, and, you know, he started to, it, you know, when he explained the illness to me, it, it was very simple. You know, he said, you suffer with a threefold illness. He said, spiritual, mental, and, um, and physical. Um, he said, like, you know, for me, when the penny dropped, well, I'll be completely honest, when the penny dropped for me was this. He said, you suffer with an allergic reaction, an allergy. You have an allergic reaction when you put a substance inside you. And I went like can you explain that more because i'm not am I, i'm not stupid but i needed that book explaining to me and you know and he said um i gave him an example earlier on in, in, in as, as we were talking and, and sharing experiences i said listen I, my, my, my daughter's godfather is one of my best mates i said i work for him i said um you know we go to the pub every night every night i meet him in the pub and he'll walk in and say do you want a pint and i say yes and then i say to him do you want a pint and he says yes and then I say to him, do you want another pint? And he says, no. And I look at him walking out the door because he's going home with his family. He's going home to have dinner. He's going home to be a father. And I look at him walk out the door. And in my head, I think, how the fuck can you do that? You know, how can you do that? How can you now walk out of this pub? You know, forget me calling it on within another like 10 minutes, disappearing for days, you know, doing all like getting up, you know, forget all that. How can you do that? How can you walk out of this pub after having that drink? And um, he said, it's very simple. You know, when you put that substance in you, you have an allergic reaction and it brings off the, on this phenomenon of craving that you cannot stop wanting and thinking of more. You know, and I just went, wow. He said, you're different. You are different to that fella. Like your pal does not suffer with the illness you do of alcoholism and addiction. And I said, wow. So that is why he can walk out the door and I can't. He went, exactly. You know, he said, you know, when, you know, we went through the steps, right? Um, you know, step four for me, everyone, like, like, it was an experience, right? You know, my, my sponsor said to me at the, at the when, it, when we started the work, he said, are you willing to go to any lengths? Are you willing to do everything that I say? Are you willing to go to any lengths and do what I say you got to do? And I went, mate, I'll do whatever you say. I will do anything to, to stop, you know? And um, he said to me, 
you know, like my step four, I, 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 I was told to get three commitments at home group straight away, you know, um, and one of them was Richmond. And within my first week, I had a commitment there doing the tees. And, um, and I loved that commitment. Absolutely loved it. And he, you know, I did my step five with him on a Wednesday evening whilst making teas and coffees for other addicts. Right, you know, so that was, the, I was willing to go any less. All that horrible stuff that I was just about to share with this man that had caused me to use for years and years and years, I was willing to do it, you know, in a, in a small kitchen, you know, because he said to me, we're doing your step five tonight. And I went, fair enough. You know, that's, that's, that, that was me going to any lengths that he asked me to go to, you know. We went through the steps, you know, you, you, you know, the growth steps, four to nine, and, you know, the amends process. I'll, I'll share this. You know, um, you know, my father and me were best mates growing up, you know, best mates. You know, I did everything with my dad. I worked with him, used to, you know, socialise with him, um, go fishing with him, you know, father-son stuff, you know. And then um, drugs entered my life and he left my life. He hated it, detested it, you know. Um, and uh, for years and years and years, we just, you know, it was, there was, it was, it was terrible. You know, what I, what I, you know, what, what I stole from that man, like his peace of mind wise was, was everything, you know, he felt he'd lost his son. And, um, you know, I went around my parents' house to make my amends and I, and I, I knocked on the door, spoke to my mum, I made my amends. She told me to shut up and just carry on doing what I was doing. Cause I'm her son and she loves me, whatever. Um, and I said, I need to speak to dad. And, and she said, listen, I'd, I'd give it a little while. I said, no, no, I, I need to do this now. It's got to be done now. Um, you know, and I called him and he came to the top of the stairs and he just looked straight at me and went, what the fuck do you want? Um, followed by, you know, look, get out of my fucking house. And I begged him and I said, listen, please, can I, um, can I talk to you? I've got something to say. It's very important. And he just went, listen, I've heard all your bullshit before for years and years. Whatever you're going to say, I've heard it before. Just leave. Well, and I begged the man, I begged him, you know, and, um, and finally you give in, he went, if it's going to, if it, listen, if it's going to shut you up and get you out of my house, let's, what, what? And so we walked to the back of the house and we were out in the, his conservatory and we're standing there and, and I, you know, in step eight, we write letters, you know, we walk out a thousand miles in someone else's shoe, a hundred miles, whatever it is, you know, we write a letter from them to us telling that, telling us exactly what we've done to them and how they feel. And, you know, and I read him the letter and my sponsor bollocked me afterwards. He said, you're not supposed to do that. You're really not supposed to do that. But I did it with my dad and I'm so, so glad that I did. And, you know, and, and I read him this letter and then made my amends and, and, and a tear would roll down his, his cheek. You know, and he looked up to the sky, not me, he, and he went, thank you, God, I've got my son back, you know. And he hugged me. I've never felt an embrace like that in my life, right? You know, and this is a full grown man. I'd not told him I'd loved him or anything for 30 something years, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, and then he pushed, I'll never forget, he pushed me away. And he looked at me and he went, do you know what you've done to me and my life? You know, at that point, I realised, you know, how selfish and self-centred I've been for all them years. You know, um, I made all my amends. You know, I went through the process. I finished step 12 with my sponsor in the kitchen at Richmond. Um, he said, right, well done, Matt. He said, now go and give this stuff away. Go and give this to as many as men as, as they need it. And that has been my experience up to this day. You know, I help as many addicts as I possibly can. Um, look, um, what's life like now? Um, unrecognisable, completely unrecognisable. You know, I'm not the man that I was. You know, I'm, uh, you know, I absolutely, you know, love CA. I absolutely love the fellowship. I love helping addicts. You know, I love being part of my family again. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm responsible today. You know, I'm building my company up again. You know, um, just everything, everything is brilliant. You know, everything, all the external stuff is absolutely fantastic. But you know, the best part of it, the best part is the internal stuff. That's the best part, you know, because today, you know, I can sit with myself, right? You know, I wake up some mornings, right? You know, restless, irritable, and discontent. 
I wake up feeling pissed off, bored and ungrateful. I wake up with a malady on me, that spiritual sickness. Well, I wake up like that, you know. It's at that point, right, what do I do? At that point, I work my program on a daily basis, you know, and it doesn't take long before, you know, I am, I'm different. Something has changed in me, you know. Um, so, yeah, life, honestly, look, uh, if there's anyone new on here, right, and like I said, you didn't get anything from my chair, please go to another, go, go to another meeting. You know, your ear ones. I, I, like I said, I'm not, a, I'm not a circuit speaker. I speak from the art. You know what I mean? Cocaine Anonymous saved my life. You know, um, I believe in God today. You know, I believe in a power greater than myself. You know, I have faith. I have complete faith today. Do you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I've, I've, I've got a family that, that doesn't worry about me anymore. That, that, you know, that, that, that when the phone rings, they're not worrying whether it's a phone call that, that I'm dead, you know, um, I've got, oh, I've got everything, absolutely everything. And, um, you know, I've, I've helped as many men as I possibly can, you know, well, and over, I worked it out the other day in four and a half years, I'm probably up to about 80 men that I've given suggestions to about 80, must be about 80 men, you know, um, they're not all here. You know, um, Bill's wife said to him, you know, it's, it's a lot of people probably know this, you know, and he, after, after a few months, he came back and he went, I'm a failure. And she said, what do you mean? He said, I can't, I, I'm failing with everyone. No one will stay clean and sober. She went, you absolute idiot. She said, you're clean and sober. She said, without you being clean and sober, no one's got a chance, you know, and, you know, I help them men and it's up to them if they want to remain and do this stuff. You know, if they do, the life on offer is unbelievable. So listen, look, um, I think my time's up now. I just want to say thank you very much for allowing me to be a service. Um, I hope someone got something from that. If you didn't, like I say, go to another meeting. Uh, my name's Mountain Recovered Addicts. Thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.